International and today we're going to talk about this kit, the T54-1 with a full interior from MiniArt in 135th. This is the kit number 37003 and as, uh, as you can see uh, MiniArt are sort of continuing on from the, uh, the Russian Second World War vehicles and continuing on into post-war. So the T54-1, there was not that many made, it went into production um, I think basically after the prototypes there was also a T54-2 which MiniArt do. Um, so this one wasn't many made, it had a few idiosyncrasies, the turret is different to in later versions. And also you can see there was a machine gun on uh, on top of the running gear, on, on the mudguards on either side, that was only used in this particular model. Uh, and I think quality control was a big issue with this particular variant, hence there weren't many made. So this kit contains 1,053 parts, um, made up of 105 photo etched, 14 clear, 934 plastic parts. So it's uh, there's a lot in the box. So looking at the other sides of the box, there's a few pictures on the a few pictures there on the other side of what you're getting. I've also put some uh, some fo similar photographs to that on the website. So. Let's open up the box and see what we get. So inside it's, it's a pretty full box. Um, there's the instruction sheet. We'll come back to that in a minute. So basically we have one bag with nuts. Basically two bags and pretty strong cardboard box. That's good. I'll open up these bags and be back in a second. So here we are. So inside, let's see, these items were inside one of the bags. All this was inside one bag. And then we opened that bag. All these items were inside a separate bag inside. As you can tell, there's a lot of plastic here. So I'm not gonna have a chance to go through it all here, which will be here all day. So, um, so to look at a few pieces, this lot here seems to be mostly, all those are tracks, by the looks of it, and they look, they look quite nice, individual tracks, times lots of them, nice fine attachment points, um, can't see any ejector pins anywhere obtrusive so those should work nicely and there is a lot of them I think that'll keep us busy for a while and then we have bear in mind this is a full interior kit as well so a lot of these parts are going to be interiors just looking at some of the fine detail on stuff it looks to be nicely detailed seems to be there's part of the engine. I'll just look at that. There's some nice, nice, de nice detail on that, even down to individual nuts and bolts. Let's do spare exhaust manifolds. Perhaps that's a generator. Some more look, look like interior pieces. Uh, yeah, lots of nice detail, fine attachment points. Can't see any eject pin marks in awkward places. That's the main main two parts of the turret. So this will change this particular turret was only used on this this particular model of the T54. Um, and some very nice details on here. Fine attachment points. Check the pin marks. Not seeing any on the inside of the turrets or the turret halves. So it's some cleverly, cleverly designed sprue, so we don't have to be filling in ejector pin marks that you might see later. Okay, next sprue. This is definitely interior detail. Um, storage racks, looks like a gearbox of some sort, perhaps there. Gas tanks, fine, some nice fine detail in there. 
another looks like another engine. So I seem to remember that the T there was an engine change in the early T54s as well. So possibly this extra part over here is one of these is an the replacement engine. I suspect that's the replacement engine this is used in an earlier version. So it looks like there will be a few parts left over that you don't use. Some really nice detail on there. Another big sprue. Sprue C. Um, yeah, lots of nice detail. This grill here is actually see-through. It's not just a sort of representation of a grill. It is actually a real grill. <laughs> With some very fine uh, slots in it. More parts, canvas on the canvas uh, from the outside of the turret. Mud guards. Some nice stuff there now. This slot here was inside the uh, an interior plastic bag. So there's two uh, towing cables. Seems be, these ones seem to be the duplicates and I'm sort of think, getting a feel for there's running gear in here. Lots of running gear. There you go. All these lots of sprues like that with the uh, with wheels. Lots of sprues with ammunition. More screws with fine details, drive sprockets, parts of the suspension. Yeah, so this lot here seems to be all suspension. And uh, let's see if I can just move some of these out of the way to see what's right down at the bottom here. There's the running gear, these are all those are all ammunition. These all seem to be transmission parts. Running gear. Those pieces are rather nice. Some nice detail in there. If we can go to the bottom, what have we got? Yeah. We have on the left here. It looks that's the very bottom of the uh, of the hole. Hold sides there. We have a nice base detail. Let's see the ejector pin marks. So there's a thing there, but I don't think it's an ejector pin mark. It looks. Like it's designed to be there, and well, yeah, all sorts of nice subtle detail on these, and actually lots of parts, small attachment points, so they should look good. Somewhere here, there we go. Let's have a quick look at what's in here. So the clear parts and the decals are separate. That's the decals. So it looks like there's some good one, two, three options there for decals. Um, lots of clear parts. I'll take a better photograph of those. I'll take photographs of everything as usual, put it on the website. And inside here, it's going to be a front wedge, I believe. Inside a folded up piece of card and taped shut so the photo etch doesn't can't actually go in there, which is nice. There we go, there's the sheets are also got a plastic cover on them as well. So I don't remember how many parts there was. Was it 50 odd parts of photo etch in here? So again I'll take some photographs of all these, put them online. Um, and the last bit to look at is 
construction book. So, uh, start off, there's the first option, summer 1947, and basically overall Russian green. Colors called out in ammo, humble, Mr. Color Testers, Vade Alejo, and uh, names of the colors in Russian and English. As layout of the sprues, yes, you can see there's gray parts there, there's a few parts not used. Turn over, there's yet the rest of the sprues described, or the layout of them. So there is a lot of sprues here, a lot of smaller sprues. So a quick flick through, but I'll go through, I'll, I'll scan all these and put them and add them onto the end of this video. But going through, build off the engine first. Start with the engine, then the hull. I'm noticing these pictures seem to be quite big, bigger than before. They seem to have put a bit more on each page, filled the space on each page better than they have before. So that's nice to see. And yeah, basically building the hull, putting the yeah, whole sides, putting things into the hull, uh, and putting the whole top, the uh, mid guards, and um, tracks. Turret. Let's pull the turret back onto the glossy paper. The was it page? Was it the first, first and last four pages of glossy paper? The rest of them are normal paper. Uh, let me get it to. There is 89 steps on this. Um, so have a closer look at these as we go through them. And then we've got a few more options here. Um, basically seem to be a variation on green. This one looks like it's got a winter camouflage on it. And then a, uh, um, a camouflaged one. Um, so well, it looks, looks very good. Nice instructions. A lot of parts, but a lot of very nice, highly detailed parts. Nice amount of photo etch. Nothing too crazy with the photo etch. Just enough to deal with the, uh, the parts where it will help, hopefully. So I'll have a close look at the instructions. Um, I'll see. And I'll photograph all the frets, all the sprues, put them on the website as well, as well as images of all the, uh, the steps in here. So, back in a moment. Okay, so usual front cover, quickly scan over that. Inside we have the first of the four decal options. Uh, this one's from summer 1947, basically an overall light green khaki. Then on to the sprue maps, and as you can see there's quite a few grey areas here where there's going to be parts left over from other versions of the T-54. Over the page and yet more sprue maps and a few more pieces not going to be used. And then on to the build itself. And basically this whole page is building the engine, which is obviously quite highly detailed, lots of nice parts. You see here there's an engine part on, on the screen now. Um, so that's, that's very nicely detailed. Over the page we start with the, the whole bottom building upwards. The bottom of the hull has uh, got some nice detail on it. And some transmission parts, as you can see, also nicely detailed. Page 7, still st or starting to put pieces of the transmission on and some, uh, again, more details. It's a very highly detailed kit. Over the page to page 8, starting to add some structure inside. And at the bottom, step 21, putting uh, items on the side walls. Page 9, continuing with adding items to the side walls. Over the page, uh, page 10, and we put the engine in the hull and put the sidewalls in place along with all the ammunition. Uh, page 11 starting with or put the wheels on adding yet more uh, details inside the uh, firewall goes in. Page 12 over to steps 33 to uh, 38 on here and we're starting to add some detail up some parts of the 
top of the hull and the exterior of the hull. Page 13, um, more hull top of the engine decking is going on, along with um, some more small parts. Page 14, um, photo etch grills on the engine deck and external fuel tanks on, um, on the mudguards. Uh, page 15, those interesting machine guns on the mudguards are put together and the first one goes into place. Um, more pieces on the sidewalls, on the uh, uh, mudguards. Over the page 16, still working on the mudguards, adding more things to them. And at this stage, the tracks go on. They're individual um, track links. They've uh, 90, 90 pieces uh, per side. So that one will take you a little while. Uh, over the page 17, and uh, mudguards go on, and then we start on the turret. turret Seems like it, it's, it's not perfectly smooth. I know the Russian Second World War tanks uh, there were cast and it was a very rough cast. This one looks smoother, so but it, it's not perfectly smooth, so there's a little bit of texture on there, which is nice. Um, a lot of, lot of small details go into the to it. Over the page in page 18, get more details and small parts going inside the turret along with the breach of the gun. Page 19, we're still on the turret, adding more small more small parts to it. Over and um, page 20, and we're putting the uh, the big 12.7 millimeter machine gun on top of the turret. And on page 21, we put the top and bottom halves of the turret together, along with the uh, along with the, the gun itself. And basically put all the last pieces together, so the build is complete. Over the page we have, on the last three pages we have three of the four decal options. Um, first one is again in the in the light green. Uh, the third one uh, with number 222 is a, uh, looks like a lightly winter wash. And the last one is a three colour uh, design which looks quite nice and that's what's used in the box art. So if we have a quick look here's the uh, here's a closer look at the decal sheet. Uh, those look quite nice and this, it's reasonably straightforward. This is not many decals on this. Um, P frets look very nice as well. Um, they'll add some add some nice fine detail where, where, where they can be seen. So overall, this is, it's, as you can see, it's a full interior kit. There's a lot of parts. It's highly detailed. With these interior kits, I always feel a little bit bad about all the interior detail and try and wondering if there's a way to get it all to display um, easily enough. You can open the, open the hatches. It would be nice to sort of be able to do more than that. Um, but it is quite the kit. There's a lot of really nice details on here. Um, should go together very nicely. Uh, Mini Arto, they really do these well. They're very nice. So it's a highly recommended kit. It should keep you busy for quite some time, but you should end up with something that's quite impressive. So many thanks to Mini Art for sending the kit for review.